Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to draw. Uh, wait, hang on. I'm in axe. I'm in axe. I'm not in John. I'm in axe. Oops. All right, John. The Okay. Hey guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to John 15 to 20, Proverbs 16, and Psalm 18. Let's get started. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. And already you are clean because of the word that I, word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whatever well, abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he will throw it away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, then you ask where, whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. And I this my father's glorify. And you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. And as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. I abide in my love, for if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I love you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. You are no longer do I call you servants. The servant does not know what is my sister. And that I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from the Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it has hated me. Therefore, I hated you. If you are of the world, the world would have loved you as its own. But because you are not of the world, I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. And remember the word that I said to you. The servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will persecute yours. The only thing they will do to you on the of my name. Because they do not know him who sent me. And if I had not come and spoke, to them, they are not having guilty of sin, and now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. And if I have not done one of the worst that no one did, else did, he will not be guilty of sin. And now they have seen and hated both me and my father, but the word that has been in the law must be fulfilled. They hated me as I was, and when the helper comes, the will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth. He proceeds from the Father. He will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness because you've been with me, been with me from the beginning. And I said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. And I'll put you out of the sin God. Indeed, that was coming when whoever kills you, you will think he's offering service to God. And I'll do these things because they have not known the Father, but all me. And I said these things to you, the same things to you, so that, that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, and I was because I was with you. But now I am going to him, to him who sent me. And now you he ask me, ask me where you go. But because I have said these things to you, so I have spilled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that you go away. And if I do not go away, no help will not come to you. If I go, I will send them to you. Then he comes and convicts the word of God. He said, because I have seen my judgment and judgment. He is saying sin because they do not believe in me. He is saying righteousness. And as I go to the fire, you will see me no longer. And he is saying judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, but you will not speak on his own authority. And whatever he has, he will speak. He will declare to you all the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take all his word and declare to you. And that all that the Father has is mine. And if I say that he will take one's mind and declare it to you, in a little while, and you will see me no longer again in a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is it that he says to you? In a little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father, so that he still will say, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they had wanted to ask him. So he said to him, 
This is what you're asking yourself. And what I meant by saying, a little while and you'll not see me. And again, a little while and you'll see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you'll keep weeping and learning with the well rejoice. You'll be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. And a woman is giving birth, she is sorry because the hour has come. And when she is delivered, the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish. The joy that a human being has been born into the world. Uh, I see you sorry now, and I'll see you again. Your hearts will rejoice, and now I will take a day from you. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, what if you ask for my father in my name? He will give it to you, and until you have uh, nothing in my name, ask and you will see that you may all joy may be full. I said these things to you, and you, to you in figures of speech, and I was coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech. I'll tell you finally about the Father. In that day, you will ask him my name, and do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed, and that I came from God. I came from the Father, and I have come into the world. And now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly, and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things, and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus is in the Jew now believe. We hold the hours come, indeed it is come, but you will be scattered, each to his own and will leave me alive. Yet I am not alive, for the Father is with me. And I said these things to you, and that only you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Then Jesus has spoken these words. You have to have his eyes to have answer. Father, the hours come, glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh. So you give a time life to all whom you have given him. And this is a time life that they may know that they know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world out of the world. You will see what you gave them to me, and they've kept your word. Now they know that everything you that you have given me is from you. I have given them the words that you gave me, and they received them and have come to know the truth that came from you, and I believe that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, and that they are yours, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I am glorified in them, and I am no longer in, this, in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Give them your name, which you give me, that they may be one, for as we are one. While I was with them, I get them your name. You've given me, uh, given me, and I have got them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And I have given them your, your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in your truth, the word is truth, and she sent me into the world into the world. So I will have sent them in the world. Sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate them to myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. And the glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, and I am them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me, and I love them, even as you love me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, and that they be with me, and that I am to see that glory that you have given me, because you love me before the foundation of the world. The righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I have made known, known to your name, to your name, and I will continue to make it known, knowing that the love with which you have loved me, may be in them, and I in them. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, but there was a God from which he and his disciples entered. The Jews who betrayed him, and they also knew the place. The place where Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Jesus, having procured a band of soldiers, and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. And Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to him, Do you see the answer? Jesus of Nazareth, he said, I am he. Jesus, who betrayed him, was saying with them. And Jesus said to them, I am he. And he drew back and fell to them, so he asked them again, Who do you see? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus answered, I tell you that I am so if you seek me, let these men go, let these men go. This is to fulfill the word, the word that he has spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have not lost, lost not one. 
and saw so here having a sword. Jiren struck the high priest seven and cut off his right ear. And Jesus said to the priest, Put your sword in its chest. And then, shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers have been captured and the officers of Jesus arrested Jesus and Batman. Those they led him to Alice, where he was the father in law of Caiaphas. Maybe it was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. For the people, Simon Peter is followed Jesus is, and so to another disciple. So that disciple was known to the high priest. He entered Jesus into the courtyard. Courtyard. Into the courtyard. Of the high priest. Uh, the hero stood outside of the door. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to the servant girl. He came watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You uh, also are not one of his man's, of his this man's disciples, are you? And he said, I am not. Now the servants and officers have made a chunk of fire. You can see it was common. They are standing and warming themselves. He also was with the standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples. And his teaching. But Jesus answered, I speak openly, openly to the world. I have taught, always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them, that they know what I said. They know what I said. And when he said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, This is how he answered the high priest. Jesus answered them, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the law. If what I said is right, why did you strike me? The others then said, I'm bound to high as the high priest. The Simon and Simon and Peter were standing there warming themselves. So he said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He desired him and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you? Did I not see you in the garden with him? He again denied it, and at once a reached to cry. And they led Jesus from the house, copy first to the governor's headquarters. There was only one of the other sons did not enter the governor's headquarters. So, so that they would not need to fill, that they could eat the Passover. Pilate went out, so Pilate went outside to him and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? What do you bring against this man? And he said, this, If this man were not doing evil, we, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to him, Taking yourselves and judging by your own law, she so said to him, it, it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This is to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his quarters and called Jesus and said to him, I am the king of the Jews. And he said, Do you say this of your own court, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, I am, am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. And for my kingdom are of this world, I sell it to the being fine, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. My kingdom is not from me. Not from the king, not from the war. And Pilate said to him, So you are a king, Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For the purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is up the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is the truth? After Jesus said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, so you have a custom, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want to, me to release this, you to the king of the Jews? Who cried out again. No, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a lover. Lover. Now Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Uh, and arrayed it in a purple, in a, in a purple robe. They came out to him and said, Hail, hey, king of the Jews, and struck him with their hand. Pilate went out again and said, See, I bring him out to you that you may know. Uh, I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Jesus said to him, Pilate said to them, Behold the man. Then the chief priest and the officer saw him and cried, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to the priest, Say, Give me your souls and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. And then Jesus answered, We have a law, and according to what that law he ought to die, because he made himself the son of God. And Pilate heard the state that he was more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where he felt, but Jesus came to him no answer. And so Pilate said to him, But you will not speak to me. Do you not know that I have authority to release and authority to crucify? Jesus answered, You would have no authority over me at all, unless it had been given you from above. Therefore he who delivered me over to you has the greatest sin. Um, then our pilot sought to release him. the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you will not see his friend. No one who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment. See, and why he's called the stone pavement in Aramaic Gabbatha.
No, it was the day of the preparation of the Passover, and it was about the sixth hour, and he said to the Jews, Behold your king, and he cried, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to him, Should I crucify your king? And the chief priest answered, We are the king for Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So he took Jesus, and he went up, and he buried his ankles, to a place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Then they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription put on the cross. He wrote Jesus as of the king of the Jews. And he had the Jews wrote this inscription. From the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Arabic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. Rather, this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I am written. And the soldiers who were crucified Jesus, he took his garments and divided them into four parts. One part for each soldier, and there is in his chain. Now the chain was seen with weapon in one piece from top to bottom. So he said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast us for it to see who it shall be. This is to fulfill the scripture which says, He divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldier did these things, standing by the cross of Jesus with his mother and his brother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And Jesus saw his mother and his disciple, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby. He said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And he found that, and the disciple took her to his own home. Of this Jesus, knowing that he was all was now finished, said, so, I thirst. And jar of full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of sour wine. Sour wine. On a hyssop branch, and held it to his mouth. And Jesus had received the sour wine. He said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit, since it was the day of the preparation, so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath. The uh, Jews asked Pilate that the legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and the elf the other who had already been, cruci- who had been crucified with him. And they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, and could not break his legs. And one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once they came up blood and water. He who he saw has bore witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he had done the truth. And he also made belief that these things took place that scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And another scri- again and another scripture says, You will look on him whom they pierced. And after these things, Joseph from the Lord with you, who was a disciple of Jesus, they secretly for fear of the Jews, and asked you, Pilate, that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away the body. Nicodemus, as if he only had come into Jesus by night, and he makes you a and blood, and by 75 pounds of weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in the cross, and with the spices, as it is the burial custom of the Jews, with the Jews, and bound it in the cross with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. And in the place where he was crucified, there was God, and the garment of a new tomb in which none had yet been laid. So because it was a Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, and he laid Jesus there, now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and, then, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, and one whom Jesus loved, and said to him, They had taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they would have laid them. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going to the tomb. Both of them were riding together, and the other disciple out ran Peter, and reached the tomb first. He was me to look, and he saw the linen cloth lying there. But he did not go in. And Simon Peter came upon him and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloth lying there, and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloth, but falling up in a place by itself. And the other disciple who had received the tomb first, reached the tomb first, also went And he saw into the door. For as yet they did not understand the truth. And he was rising in the day. And the disciples went back to their home. And Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as he wept, she wept. She stood to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, seeing where the body of Jesus had lain, and one at the head and one at the feet. And he said to her, well, Why are you weeping? She said to him, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they are laid. later. The same. Alex said that she turned around and saw Jesus stand, but she did not know that it was Jesus. She said to her, well, Why are you weeping? Who are you seeing? Supposing him to be the gardener. She said to him, So if you have carried him away, tell me where you are where you have laid him, and I'll take him away. And he said to her, Mary. So she turned and said to him, and I'm Mary, Rabbi, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I am not ascended to the Father, but do you to my brothers and Satan. I am ascending to uh, to the to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Jesus immediately went and bowed to the disciples. I see the Lord, and that he has said these things to her. 
on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the first day of the week, the doors even locked and where the disciples were for fear that Jesus she, came and stood among them and said to them, He spear with you. And he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. Then some father said to me, So even so I am sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Even so I said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, may you forgive them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, this is withheld. Um, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them. When Jesus said, Okay, so the other disciples told him, He has seen the Lord, but he said to them, Unless I have seen in his hands the mark of a nail, and place my finger into the mark of a nail, and place my hand in his side, I will never believe. And he takes later, his disciples were inside again. And Thomas says with them, Open the doors for a He just came and stood among them and said, He be with me. And he said to Thomas, Peter, your finger here, your finger here, and see my hands, and put out your hand, and place it in my side. Do not believe, uh, believe. And uh, Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? And also those who have not yet seen and have yet but have believed. But Jesus did many other signs. Many other signs. Many other signs. In the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. That they are written to you, so that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that by believing you, you may have life in his name. Proverbs 16. The plans of heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. For the ways of a man appear in his own eyes, for the Lord waits the prayer. Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. The Lord made everything else for his purpose. He will go for his day, for the day of trouble. Have one who is angry in heart it was in the abomination of the Lord. Now he is short, he will not go by the rest of his love and faithfulness. He will decree his day full, and by the fear of the Lord, no one turns away from evil. When a man speaks to the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. He is slow with righteousness, and great revenues with injustice. Part of man plans his way, and the Lord establishes his death, and no one calls on the lips of the king. His mouth does not sin in judgment, and just mounts and scales of the Lord. Lord waits in the back of his one. He is an abomination to kings to do evil. On the third is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of the king. And he loves him, and he speaks what is right. The king's mouth is a messenger of death, and the wise man will be peace. In the light of a king's face, there is life, and his favor is like the clouds that bring the spring rain. How much better to get wisdom than God, to get a saying which is you, chosen rather than self. The highway that our body turns aside from evil, whenever the God's way presents his life. God goes before destruction, and a holy spirit before a fall. It is better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to divide the spoil with the power. Who gives thought to the world will discover good. Uh, blessed he who trusts in the Lord. The wise are highly called to say, The sweetness of speech increases persuasiveness. Good sense is a fountain of life to him who has it. Then the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise makes his speech judicious and adds persuasiveness to the lips. Vicious words are like honey, goes sweetness to the soul and health to the body. There is a way that seems right to a man. This enters the way to death. The work is apt to wisdom, and his mouth edges him on. The worthless man plots even his speech is like a scorching fire. The God is on his man's bread struck. Spread strife and a whisper separates close friends. The man of God attaches his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. Whoever looks at his eye, cleanses his eyes, and he receives his presses, his lips make evil to pass. The great hand is a crime of God, uh, and is gaining a righteous life. Whoever is slain to him is better than the right. He rules the spirit, and he takes the sea. Lot is cast into the lap, but his every decision is from the Lord. Psalm 82. God has taken his place in the divine house, in the midst of the gods he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and shape partiality to the weak? Give justice to the weak and fathers, maintain the right of the affliction and the rest to rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hands of the wicked. May you not know it's not understanding you walk about darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, You are God's sons of the most high all of me. Nevertheless, like many shall die and fall like any prince. For as you got judged as if we shall inherit all the nations. Now that it's done, I shall add to the Lord's turn. These right hands are Father in heaven. And let be your name. You can never come. You will return on earth as it is in heaven. You will stand out daily by. He goes to death and sees himself again in the depths. He is not in temptation, but delivers him in the former. He goes to the king and the power and the glory of the Lord. Amen. He is my life.